Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Uh, today we're back with another video. We're just going to go through some uh, tips and tricks and tweaks for Flight Sim 2020 and Flight Sim 2024. Most of them you probably know about. Uh, I think we all know by now all the tips and tricks that you can do because it's, you know, they're kind of all the same. Um, but everyone has it a little different. Everyone has a little bit of a different setup, different graphics cards, processors, internet connection, all a bit different. So I'm going to run through a few things. I'm going to show you how I have it set up um, and hopefully it helps. Uh, you've probably seen it before, but anyway, we'll get on with it and um, hopefully we'll get someone's flight sim running a little bit smoother. So the first thing, accelerated GPU scheduling. Now you'll find this uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 in the graphics settings if you just search uh, graphics okay and you have to go advanced and then uh, it's just down here so if you if you uh, want to use frame generation you have to have this on I'm pretty sure uh, variable resh uh, refresh variable refresh rate I keep it on I haven't really I don't really notice a difference to be honest I have a G-Sync monitor anyway so I don't even know what this does exactly it says get higher frame rates and help reduce screen tearing so i guess yeah you don't want screen tearing so turn it on now hardware accelerated gpu scheduling what this does um it's used for frame generation it shifts frame buffering from the cpu over to the graphics card okay so uh flight sim is a very cpu intensive game and graphics intensive but there's a lot of cpu bottleneck that happens um so this just kind of helps with that so uh have it on i have had it off before i've had it back on before um every time they release an update sometimes it's unstable and you turn everything on and off but i have it on now no issues at all so that's the first one all right second one is nvidia profile inspector r bar now, if you guys haven't got NVIDIA Profile Inspector, you can download it off Google. Uh, and then once you download it, I'll get it up for you. So we go Profile Inspector. That's the wrong one. All right. Here we go. Maybe not. Doesn't want to play the game. All right. Stand by for a second. Here we are. It's coming up. All right. Here we are. This is what it looks like. So it's just got um, different sections. So section one, section two, three, four, and blah, blah, blah. What we want is section five, okay? Um, halfway down between section five and section six, you'll see R bar. By default, I'm pretty sure it's enabled. Now, if you're using, um, if you're using the beta for version three at the moment, and you're getting those Wasm crashes. I did see a video saying uh, if you turn this off, it'll fix it. I tried it and it didn't work for me, but it could work for you, so it's something you could try. Uh, now, NVIDIA Profile Inspector, it stands for Resizable Bar, uh, R Bar, a feature that can improve graphics performance, especially on modern graphics cards. It allows the CPU to access more of the GPU's VRAM, potentially leading to smoother frame times and higher FPS, particularly in CPU-bound games, which is flight sim. So, yeah, I've got it enabled. Works pretty well. Okay, that's that one. Right, so the next one is um, the NVIDIA panel. We've all seen it before, right? We've all gone through it. We've all got our own little settings and stuff. This is the way I set it up, so if it's going to work for you, you can try it. So, anisotropic filtering, I have it set to 16 times here, and I have it turned off in the sim, as you would have seen before. Um, it just, my textures look a lot better when I have it on in here, versus the sim. Okay, so, I have this set to enhance, I have that set to 8, I have... Yeah, the fallback policy to prefer system fallback this uh so it may allow allocations made in the graphics card memory to fall back to the system memory or the ram in certain situations to comply with the windows display driver model 
So if the GPU memory is full, it'll fall back to the system memory. So yeah, so that's that. Low latency monitor on ultra, uh, or you can just have it on. It's not, I don't think it's that different. Monitor technology, I have it on fixed refresh. Uh, like I have a G-Sync monitor, so you can have it on G-Sync compatible, but for some reason I find it better on fixed refresh. Uh, don't ask me why. All right, so that's my graphics card, prefer max performance. Some people say this will throttle your uh, graphics card. Probably will, but you could have it on normal. It'll throttle up anyway when it needs to. I just I just have it on max. Um, preferred refresh rate, highest available. Okay, sample options on negative um, LOD bias allow and quality high performance trilinear optimization to on vertical sync off. I have it off in the game, but you should only have it on either in here and off in the game or on in here, uh, off in here and on in the game. Vice versa done. All right, so task manager. So I'm pretty sure by now we've all done this, hopefully. Uh, so get up task manager, find flight sim, right click on it. This can be 2020 as well. This can be nearly any game that allows you to do this. So honestly, try it on any game. Right, so you go to details, right click, set priority and high. It's normally on normal, normally on normal. So this just, you know, prioritizes the CPU to make sure it prioritizes flight sim. Uh, make sure the CPU prioritizes flight sim. So yeah, that's that one, pretty easy. Um, now the next one, if you don't have a G-Sync or FreeSync or Adaptive Sync monitor, um, highly recommend getting one, even if it's like 1080p. Um, I've got a 2K one. Uh, if you have, if you're running like 25 frames a second and you have a 60 hertz monitor that's not G-Sync or FreeSync, you're going to get screen tearing. It's going to look horrible. If you have a FreeSync monitor, uh, so see right now, I have a FreeSync monitor. I'm only getting 25 frames a second, as you can see up here. Or well, now it's up to 40, but it's pretty low, right? So, but it's, it's smooth. Like, you would think I'm getting like 60, all right? But if you, if I um, put this on one of my 1080p monitors, it's gonna be glitchy as anything, screen tearing, so. That's another thing, if you guys um, have a bit of a lower end system and you can't get higher FPS with frame gen or anything like that, um, try a G-Sync monitor, like it definitely helps. Helps kind of making you pretend that it's running smooth and it's really not. <laughs> Right, so that's the uh, that's that one done. So the next one, we're going to go to flight sim settings. I think we all know what this looks like. Right, so flight sim settings, graphics tab. Um, right, so I got 2K. I got TAA just because it looks the best. Um, I really DLSS. I don't really notice that much of a performance hit. Uh, like with TAA versus DLSS, so I just leave it on TAA. Frame generation, I've just turned that on. Um, it's the thing with Flight Sim 2024. I had it on earlier, like I never touched it, I just turned it on, and I was getting like 60 frames a second, and now I'm getting 40. So I think it's, you know, I don't know, it's all over the place, this game. Like, hopefully it'll be super stable. And I haven't got the best system in the world, so that, that's definitely a contributing factor. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a few other factors, but I've got like 800 megabit a second internet download, so internet's not a problem. Um, but yeah, I've got that on DLSS. I've got vSync off, dynamic settings off. Um, in here, now, well, yeah, this is uh, actually, this is probably the reason why. So I normally run this at anywhere from like 120 to 150. I was actually trying something earlier and I put it up to 200, but I forgot all about that. So that's probably why I was getting 30 to 40 FPS. Um, frame pre-caching. Now, in Flight Sim 2024, uh, 2020, this was a big thing. 
everyone was like, make sure this is ultra. Because if it's not ultra, you're going to be getting glitching and stuttering and it's just going to be terrible. So I always had mine on ultra, never lowered it. And I, like it seemed to help heaps. I've heard people say flights in 2024, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything. But like if it didn't do anything, why would the setting be here, right? So I just have mine to ultra. Um, sometimes if I'm getting low performance, I'll put it on high. But I don't run it below high. All right, so buildings and trees, I run it on high. Uh, I feel like it just looks more realistic. Like if you're flying out of a city and you're looking back at the city, you don't want the buildings to turn into like Lego blocks, you know, when, you, <laughs> when you're just on takeoff. Like you want them to look good, right? Especially if you're trying to make a cool, a cool video like I always am. Uh, never really works out, but I try. Plants, rocks, and grass, I'm never really in, like, any situation where I look at them, so I have them on low. I did have them off, but I'm pretty sure the performance isn't even, like, it doesn't change, so I just put them on low. Objects level of detail, 100. Clouds on ultra. Anything below ultra, I just feel like it just looks like you're in, like, a 1990s game, like... I know it's a bit of a performance hit, but any setting on here, I'd rather the clouds look realistic when I'm flying at them. Um, especially like when there's a storm or scattered or anything. It just, it looks so real. So, picture resolution's a kind of big one. Um, I have it on medium. I've even had it on low. Uh, barely notice it. If you're using a payway aircraft, like the Inibuilds A350, live by wires a380 um anything like that uh their textures are already kind of like loaded in so changing this doesn't really change the texture <coughs> of the aircraft much <coughs> clear my throat there um yes yeah, so i have it on medium this seems to this like alleviates a lot of frames so that's one setting to definitely think about or just, just lower it and see how you feel about it. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of a big one. All right, so I have this off. Uh, if you remember before, um, we've got the NVIDIA uh, anisotropic filtering um, all the way up. And water waves, I've got a low. And all of the, pretty much everything else now is on, um, is on low. So... Yeah, all that stuff's on low, and light shafts, medium, uh, literally everything's on low, which is a pity. Like, I, I thought I had a pretty good graphics card. I've got a 4060 Ti. I've got, like, a 14700K processor or something like that, but I've only got an 8GB graphics card. That's the problem. So a 16 or 32 would be a lot nicer. Um, just not yet. So... Yeah, that's all those graphics settings. Um, can't really think, like, if you guys are having problems with frame gem, which I have been recently, if you're in that update three, uh, DLSS was not even working for me. It was stuttering and just, it was an absolute mess. I had to actually use AMD FSR 3, but then it kept crashing. And it even says can cause crash for some users on NVIDIA cards at the moment. <laughs> so... I had to go to no frame gen, um, which is not horrible. Like, if I do it now, I put that terrain level of detail down, no frame gen. Right? So, there's kind of not stabilizing up here. I'm still getting dirt, which is, I know it's absolutely horrible for you guys out there with awesome systems. But for me, as long as my game is like half smooth, and like, that's not very smooth, is it? Like, that's hurting my eyes to like pan. Yeah. And OBS probably isn't set up the best right now for me for full crazy movement. So you guys might be getting a bit of blurring. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah. But then if we whack frame gen on. DLSS. Uh, we're in Sydney, by the way. We're facing west. We're on the right now. Three, four. Three, four, left. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, so, I don't know, see, frame gen takes a bit for me, like, it kind of, it's a bit stunning right now, but then it, it just goes smooth. Anyway, 
All right, one last thing. Um, let's see if I can find how to get it. Just bear with me. All right, so DLSS swapper. So again, it's one of those things. It might work, it might not work, uh, but it's worth trying. So DLSS swapper pretty well gives you the latest version of DLSS for any game that is compatible with it. Um, and I know you think Flight Sim probably already has the latest version, but for some stupid reason, it does definitely not. Definitely does not. It's like 2.30 in the morning, so my English is not doing well. Um, yeah, I'm saying um a lot. I should make that a caption of my video. Um, anyway, so I've got uh, Frame Gen 3.10.2.1 uh, and DLSS. Now, as you can see, so reset your DLL to its original. I'm pretty sure the original was like 3.5. So you can see how many versions, you know, have been brought out. And some of these versions fix a lot of little bugs too, so just try that out. Try um, changing it to the latest one. If that doesn't work, change it back if you're using frame gen. If you're not, then don't worry about this at all. Yeah, but that's pretty well all I've got. Um, I'm still, like I actually deleted flights in 2020, unfortunately. I just, I kind of needed the disk space and I wanted the disk space to make the cash the rolling cash, like 150 feet uh, after in 2024, just to stop stuttering and all that kind of stuff. I have, um, sometimes when I spawn into an airport, when I'm not in my local area, I'll get in drone view and I'll actually kind of drone around the city. A lot of people say if you do that, it'll kind of pre-cash, you know, everything around you in. Then that way it'll be like less stuttering and less glitchiness when you take off and stuff, so. I don't, I, to be honest, I find it, it barely changes anything, but I, it's not going to change the FPS, but it's going to change any stutters that can happen when you take it off. So you'd rather those stutters happen in drone view, um, yeah, when you're already, like, up in the air, you're in a drone, you're not flying a plane, trying to film, so it really does not matter. Um... See if I can watch a video back and I'll count how many times I said it up and up and see if I can beat it on the next video. Sorry about that. Horrible. But we'll take off. Uh, we'll let, yeah, there it is again. We'll take off. We'll leave you guys with a good uh, fun clip. This rumble lights are super gloomy. I'll uh, show you something else. We're doing the set too. Alright, so V1 and close my hundred and eighty watts. Laps up, gear up. And that is super loud, I'm so sorry. Alright. Beautiful uh, Sydney. Uh, something else too I've been using recent, uh, recently is Reshade. So if you guys haven't used it, search it up, have a uh, look. But like even just taking these effects off just totally changes it. I don't even know if that was the right one. Magic HDR. Yeah, but play around with it. It's really good fun. Makes your sim look really cool. That is all I have for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you to those who subscribe and like on my videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, helps me get my videos out there to everyone. My goal is to just try and help as many people as I can try and make fun flight sim content. Um, I love watching all you guys out there who have flight sim content. So hopefully one day we can all get together um, virtually on VATSIM or something and actually not crash or drop out or stutter one day. But anyway, stay safe out there. I'll see you guys on my next video. Thanks again.